good to have each and every one of you here as I look through the congregation. Uh, several of our regular attendees are not here. We need to uh, remember them in prayer. And we need to remember, I have it in the bulletin, but Sister Jeanette Adams is now in Standertown Rehab Room 12. And if you have a chance to visit, I know she'd appreciate it. Uh, if not, pray for her. Uh, she had a stroke uh, last week and uh, is doing better. Uh, but I noticed here recently she had trouble gathering her thoughts together just a little bit. But, you know, the stroke puts a great strain on the body. So let's remember her in a special way. Desire your prayers as we go into the word of uh, God this morning. Uh, the title for uh, this morning's message is uh, Walk Worthy. And as we uh, prepared for this, um, you know, it's amazing how scriptures would just flood your mind. And I'd worked on it and was doing some other stuff, Brother Jerry, and just like that, another scripture popped in my mind, and I went and wrote it down. I didn't know exactly where it was, but I knew the content of it, and I searched it and found it, and um, I got up and one morning, and another scripture just popped in my mind, and um, I'm just praying that I got it together in the sequence and the order that uh, God will be edifying. Over in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 3, it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. That's quite a statement, isn't it? The prisoner of the Lord. It meant that the Lord had complete domination. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, as capital S, the Holy Spirit, in the bond of peace. Uh, when I first started pastoring, I went to Pocatello, Idaho, and my pastor from Pennsylvania came out to visit my father, who was living in Idaho at the time, and visited them and then came up to see me. And when Brother Blainer walked through my door, uh, the first thing I looked at him and said, you made it look so easy. I had no idea what it took to be a pastor. You know, the preaching and the teaching behind the pulpit or on the podium uh, is not the biggest past, part of the pastoral. It's an important part. God wants to bless his word. But it says here that we are to walk in all lowliness and meekness. Uh, little Brianna today, uh, I was in the back and I saw all these little kids back there and I said, how you doing? And she says, let me give you a hug. And chairs separated. I said, no, wait a minute. If you're going to give me a hug, let's do it right. And I stepped out in the little hallway here and she hugged me and I thought there was a day and time she wouldn't even speak to me. She was so shy. And after a while, a uh, little patience. I've been giving her a hard time every time we have a church dinner. Now when she sees me coming, she hides her food. But see, I'm building a rapport with her. And it won't be long until she'll be talking off my ear. And it says, forbearing one another in love. You know, the word forbear, you take somebody upon you and you, uh, during the Vietnam War, there was a poster that I thought was great. It, it showed a, a wounded soldier being carried by another soldier. And, it's, and the thing said, he's not heavy, he's my brother. Sometimes, spiritually, we need to sort of scoop somebody up within our arms and, and love them. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Um, my wife was talking just uh, last night uh, about our home and how God has blessed and we said, Brother Jerry, we thank God for the peace in this household. But guess what? You have to work at keeping peace in a household. Amen? If you take, start taking your household for granted, that peace will not always be there. Okay? There may be, my wife has these little lists, honeydew lists. And uh, yesterday... Uh, I, I tackled one of the big ones, had to 
uh, rehang some wallpaper in one of our guest bedrooms. Uh, it sort of buckled out. And uh, I told Faye I would get it, but see, when she got it, she pulled the paper way back so I could really get a hold of it. Worked and worked and worked on that. But when she came in and helped me, the job went so much easier. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we're, we think we're the only ones that can do something. And all we need sometimes is just a helping hand and a willing heart. First Thessalonians, the first chapter, verses 11 and 12 says, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling. You know, each and every one of you have a calling in your life. We are all royal priests. We're ministers. And if we're not careful, we never pursue our vocation. You walk with this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You in him and he in you. Boy, you, you can't go wrong if the Lord's in you. Amen? Now, where we get in trouble sometimes is when we try to do it on our own ability. Now, this is not only in the slides, but in 2 Samuel, the 18th chapter, <coughs> uh, a war was going on. And David wanted to be kept uh, abreast of what the war was happening. So the captain of the army got a man by the name of Cushy and said, I want you to run and bring tidings to the king. Well, Cushy took off as obedient and began to run. And he was running up through the, the mountains. Well, there was another man, and I may not pronounce his name right, but it's uh, Ahimza, A-H-I-M-Z-A-Z. And he looked at the captain and says, let me run also. But he said, I don't have a message, only one. And Cushy has it. But he said, king, I feel like running. And so the captain said, go run to the king. Well, this man ran by way of the plane, and he beat Cushy to the king. So he got there, but as he was coming, David was told by one of his people, there is a man running, and he's running like, and he named this guy. You know, there's sometimes you can be behind somebody, and you know exactly who it is by the way they walk. You ever do that? Sister Faith, in fact, the other day, looked out the window and saw me, and from behind, and she said, that looks like my pastor. And I'm out there, and, I, and I'm cleaning bricks there at Spencer Penn, a little bit of an accident, and I, I'm down there trying to get the bricks nice and clean. And she said, it looked like, and, and she must have told somebody else that was my pastor, and they came out and talked to me, and I mean, I was in work clothes. I was grubby. But you know, <coughs> she still said, that must be my pastor. See, it's not whether we're wearing a suit and a tie. It's what is within and how we walk. Amen? Sometimes if we're not careful, we do not have a message all the time. When this man came to the king and he said, what message do you have? He says, I, I, I don't have one. You know what the king told him? Stand aside until somebody who does gets here. Cushy came and gave him the message. You know what? When I walk my daily Christian life, Brother Hank, I want to have a message. I want the Spirit of God to be able to prompt me, and if someone has a special need, I want to be able to touch them. You all know I like feeding stray animals, raccoons, whatever. Okay? Well, Lord, help me if I love these animals and don't love people. Amen? There should be a spirit when I, I, I'm a woman from anywhere and, and God thumps my heart and says, you need to talk to that person that I will not be afraid to talk to that person. When he knocks on your heart's door, he is also opening up the door on the other end for you to walk through. But we have to be willing to walk. The next slide is, is one of my double slides, I call them. First John 1 and 7 and then 1 John 2 and 6. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we are fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I'll tell you what, fellowship one with another. 
You cannot be fellowship of Christians. I have some good friends in the outside world, and uh, sometimes the places where I work, they would have office parties and what have you, and, and we go and make our appearance and what have you. But the fellowship, we could have a work day, and there's fellowship. Amen? We could have a car wash, and there's great fellowship. We had a car wash here not too long ago, and uh, my son was cleaning Brother Hank's car, and he said, hey, you missed the star. You know, he's a cowboy fan. My sons and I both are stiller fans. Danny, he was washing Hank's car, and he looked, and he said, nothing calm or unclean has ever touched my brush. And then Hank said, well, but what he's cleansed, don't you call calm or unclean. You know, we, we had fun with the scripture, but there was a special fellowship. As much as we carried on, we also know if I need him, I can call him, and he'll be there. He knows if... He needs me. He should be able to call me, and I will be there. Why? Because we try to walk in that same light. First John 2 and 6 says, And he that saith he abideth in him ought also himself also to walk even as he walked. You might say, well, how am I supposed to walk, Pastor? Just like Jesus did. That's a tall order sometimes, isn't it? I heard a story one time, and it may have been just a story, but a man who was an alcoholic. It was wintertime and snow was getting deep. And so he left the back door, through the back door and began to walk to the bar. And as he got near the end of his backyard, he happened to turn around. And there was this little boy looking to see where his dad was gone. And so that little boy was stretching for all that he was worth to get inside the footprints of his father so that it wouldn't be so much snow. And when the father realized that he was following in his footsteps, God touched his heart, turned around, he picked his son up, went back in the house and never drank again. You know, we never know who's following us. The, the Bible doesn't come out and say this specifically in these words, but Paul indicated one place to follow me as I follow Christ. Amen? What footprints are you leaving behind? In the Old Testament, in Proverbs, I believe it is, there was a verse that says to make straight paths for your feet. Why? Because he that is lame behind you. I had a cousin who had multiple sclerosis. And it didn't hit him until he was about 13 or 14 years old. His name was Gary. And we were at the church campground laughing and carrying on. He's a little bit older than what I was. And he was chasing me, Brother Jerry. And uh, it was just starting to touch him a little bit. He didn't have complete control. As he was chasing me, I, I ran to the cafeteria door, and then I turned to the right as fast as I could. And you know what? He couldn't turn, and he ran into that door. I didn't realize the disease that was beginning to affect him. But then as the years went by, he wound up in a wheelchair, and he couldn't even be, walk at all. As John Brevere was talking about the man that had the tumor, and he went to the one doctor, and the doctor said, it's small, it's manageable. Let me operate on it now, and let me take it out. And he wanted a second opinion, and the second doctor said, oh, no, 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 you, you don't, you, you're fine, you're strong as a horse, you don't need to worry about it. But then two years later, when the tumor grew, he wished he had listened to the first man. You know, Samson, at one point in his life, walked the right way. But he got into a wrong area one time, and the Bible says he shook himself as of other times and wished that the Spirit of God had not left him. See, sometimes if we're not careful, when you really need God, you don't have what it takes to fight off the enemy. Why? Because we have not walked the way we're supposed to walk. Next slide over in Colossians, the second chapter, 6 and 7. It says, as ye therefore receive Christ the Lord. Now, I want you to notice, I underline Lord. The scripture did not say, as ye have therefore received Jesus or Christ Jesus the Savior. John Brevere had a powerful lesson here a while back. <coughs> we need Jesus as our Savior. But boy, once he's your Savior, he needs to become your Lord. Amen? that we really know how to walk as we are to be in him as he is in us. So walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein 
with thanksgiving, being thankful. You know, I've received some tough instructions growing up. But all I was thankful, Sister Faith, that I received it and that I listened to it. So at the time, it may not have made a whole lot of sense. Heard a story one time of a, a, a child that was on a, now I don't know if you, if you know what, what slate stone is, you know, like shell, you know, it's real loose. We have a lot of that in Pennsylvania where there's coal mining going on. And, and a boy was running down the, the hill on the slate. And if you ever fall on it, you can get cut. As he was running down the hill, his father was watching him and he noticed there was a cliff. And he yelled at his son, fall down right now. And because the son respected him so much, he didn't in his mind debate, well, if I fall down, Dad, he didn't argue with him, I'm going to get cut. He dropped. And yes, he got scratched up. But you know what happened? He also was saved. If we learn to listen as you walk, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Next slide. Luke 24 and 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Now this is on the road to Emmaus. Jesus had just been crucified and these people were, two disciples were walking down. And as they walked, they were talking about the events that just happened. Now, do you realize that when Jesus was crucified, or before he was, he said, in three days, I'm going to rise again. And instead of talking about the good things that were going to happen, they were sad. Now, granted, if you and I had been there, we'd have been sad too, probably to a degree. But if we're not careful, if you're down in the dumps, don't get a walking partner that will keep you down in the dumps. Misery loves company, don't, doesn't it? But I, if I'm going through a rough patch, I want someone who will lift me up. I want someone whose spirit will edify me in a special way. The world sometimes watches as we walk. And if we're not careful, they have no desire to join us. We need to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Have you ever had a pebble or a small stone get in your shoe? Irritating, isn't it? You know what's really irritating? Is you don't stop and take it out. You just put up with it. You just keep walking and suffering and complaining how hard it is to walk today. Where if you just stop, take off your shoe and shake it, get this stone out of there, and put it back on. But we don't, we don't want to be inconvenienced sometimes. You know what? The Bible says to pray without ceasing, doesn't it? And if I go, all of a sudden I find it hard to walk like I'm supposed to walk, right where I am, I can pray even on the inside, and God give me victory. If all of a sudden I don't have that joy, the Bible says in one, in one verse, and I may have it written, it is, in my next verse, Nehemiah, 8 and 10, the last part of it. Uh, in fact, I was surprised it was a Nehemiah. I thought it would be in the New Testament. But it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you have trouble walking, you need to find some joy. Reflect on how God has blessed you abundantly. Let that joy begin to seep on the inside. When, when I personally have a hard time praying for something, and it just seems like I can't get anywhere, I began to thank him for his blessings. And you know what? It's not long till that cup is full and it's running over. And what I thought I had to pray about and get victory didn't amount to anything. When I realized what he has brought me through in times past, when David had to face Goliath, he said he shall be as the lion and the bear. Because he had walked in those shoes. When, when Saul tried to give him his armor, you know what he says? I haven't proved it. I'm not going to wear this in the battle. Well, what are you going to wear, David? What I have on right now. Well, there's no protection. God of Israel is his protection. And as we walk, we need to realize it's not who we are, but who he is. In Amos, the third chapter, in verse 3, it says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? You ever get in a three-legged race? 
been to some picnics and some fun times. And what they do is you, you team up with a partner, and they tie, if, if I want to, my right leg to their left leg. It doesn't make us a team. We're just tied together. And then you begin to run. You know what it takes? It takes communication and submission to be successful. If I look at my partner and I say, okay, let's start with the left leg first. You know what they've heard me tell them? To take the leg that's tied to my right leg and step out first. In my mind, I want the free leg. But you know what I've told them? Left leg first. So they listen to me. And all of a sudden, this leg's jerked and we go falling down. What it takes is an understanding where you are and who you are. There are some people, just like John Bevere was saying today, do not, know, do not know the definition of grace. It's more than salvation. It's more than forgiveness. It's more than the love of God. It's also the empowering work of the Spirit of God working through us. But once we've got this down pat, guess what? We can run as one. A two-folded cord is not easily broken, the Bible says. If we walk together, we need to be agreed together. Amen? <coughs> excuse me. The next slide. Second, second Corinthians, or excuse me, Psalms 37 and 23. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in all truth. Now, I want you to notice they're ordered by the Lord. Why do we ask the Lord how we should walk? Where if I'm a righteous man, sister faith, my steps are ordered. That was an eye-opener as I was studying this week. Or we say, oh Lord, shine your light upon my path. His word is a lamp unto our feet. My steps are to be ordered by the Lord. What happens sometimes is I'm not listening. And it says, "He and we are to delight in his way. We are to be happy and rejoice. When the Lord tells me to go this way, I need to go that way. Over in 2 Corinthians now, the 5th chapter, verse 7. For we walk by faith, and not by sight. How are you walking today? You're walking worthy? Do you have to see something to believe it? If you know your surroundings, let's take your living room in your house. If you know your living room, how it's set up, it could be pitch black. And you don't have to worry if you want to go into the next room. Why? You know where every piece of furniture is, and you can walk through the darkness and be just fine. See, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he's going to lead me and guide me through the valley of the shadow of death. That's darkness. And I'm going to have light. Why? Because he is in control. Now, where we get in trouble is when the wife moves the furniture and doesn't tell you. Well, I thought it was there. But you know what? God does not move anything without telling you what he's doing. Amen? We get stubborn sometimes and wonder why we fall. The last scriptures I want to use is found over here in Colossians, the first chapter, 10 through 13. And it says, that you might walk worthy of the Lord. The last slide, Michael. That you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, with, unto all patience, long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of his inheritance of the saints in light. You know, there comes a time in our Christian walk that Jesus wants us to be adults. Jesus turned around one time in the book of John and saw a multitude of people following him. And it dawned on him, he knew they were following me for my miracles. And he turned to them and said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. And the Bible says that many turned away and walked away. 
And then this is when Jesus turned to Peter and said, Will thou also go? And he said, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. I do not know what I would do without my Jesus. I go one step further. I also don't know what I would do without my church family. They're there as a support system. They're there praying. They're there if I had a, a need and I'm willing to voice that need then God will meet and supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. You know what we need to learn to do? I'm going to say this in closing. If you have trouble walking, I want to challenge you to learn to walk in the anointing and in the favor of God. Amen? If you have God's anointing on you and his favor, you will find the strength to walk. One time I was hunting in Pennsylvania, went most of the day, didn't see anything. I was tired, it was hot. I was ready to go home, call it a day. All of a sudden, a, a ringneck grouse took off, Emmett. I, bam, I brought that thing down. I was ready to hunt for no, another couple hours. I had renewed energy. I was ready to go. The Bible says there is a time of refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. If you're struggling in your walk, you need to find a refreshing time in the presence of the Lord. You need to steal away to your secret closet and ask God to renew that energy within you. His, his way is the best way. Amen? He will lead you. He will guide you. And when Jesus told Peter, or Peter told Jesus, thou hast the words of eternal life, it's still true today. How is your walk? Are you walking worthy? I want to have a stand at this time as we... Uh, have a prayer if you're here and if you've had pebbles in your shoes as you walk something has been irritating you you ever have something irritate you boy every so often it'll pop its ugly head up again and you think oh I thought I had that thing conquered well then you just need to steal away ask God to bless you ask God to anoint you I want to walk in the anointing and the favor of God to the point that all of a sudden I look behind me and people are following me. I want to be a leader, a fisher of men. How about you? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne, I want to thank you for your word, because, Lord, your word's true. And help us, Lord, to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have called us. Give us a vision, Lord. Lord, we can walk and, and be sad. Lord, we can walk and and have victory. We want to see our congregation grow <coughs> and increase with the increase of God. Lord, we're nothing without you. And we're just praying that, Lord, we can find a channel. The Lord, our hearts of souls, Lord, would be ours. You said that the laborer is worthy of his hire. And Lord, give us souls for our hire, Lord, we pray. Give us the ability, Lord, to walk in faith believing that we'll be made up by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercies. In Jesus' name.